This is how to draw. I'm Levi Smith. Today we're going to draw a little tower of pumpkins. Start with a very light line across the paper. This is your ground line. We're going to be doing a lot with this one. Around the middle, just under the ground line, draw a good sized circle. Not too small. This is the first pumpkin. Draw another circle overlapping the first one and just a bit smaller than the bottom one. One more smaller circle above those two. See how they all overlap each other. That will help them look stacked up on each other. On either side of our circles, draw a box or rectangle shape with no bottom. These will be the tombstones, and you can add more if you want. Then we'll add a larger circle in the sky behind the pumpkin circles. This will be the moon. Don't worry if it's not perfect right now. So these are all the basic shapes we need for our layout. Let's get into some details. We'll add some ground texture and a shadow line. Notice that the shadow points away from the moon. We're going to be doing that with a lot of our shadows in this one. I'll add one line to this rectangle making it look like a slab, and fill in the bottom with some lumpy ground lines. These details show some more texture in the ground. Same with the other tombstone. Add a line to give the shape some depth, and I get a little messy with the edges. Use a pencil so that you can erase your mistakes. Add some more lumpy ground lines. Notice how these seem like they're half buried in the ground here now. Next, we'll move back to the pumpkins. I'm gonna give them a little bit better of a shape and make sure that they overlap right. Notice how I make them a bit flatter on the sides and the bottom, especially the big one. Add some ground lines to settle the pumpkins into the soil. Next, we'll give each pumpkin a simple face guide. The guides are pointed in different directions to make it more interesting. The top one I'm going to point up a little. On the bottom pumpkin, we'll add some eyes. These are more like pizza shaped triangles. Add a little nose. Start the mouth with a long line all the way across the face. Keep this line parallel to that guideline. And like a banana on its back, add the second line of the mouth, keeping the middle focused on the guide. We're going to add the top row of teeth, just some simple triangles. Add the bottom row of teeth, spacing them between the top row teeth. A couple of details in the eyes can make this pumpkin look mean. Next, we do the eyes for the middle pumpkin. First thing I do here is add these little marks for the space between the eyes. I'm drawing these oval shapes this time. The one toward the edge of the face is more squished to fit that area. This other eye should be a little bigger and rounder than the, other, than the first one. We add just one line for this mouth, and we'll get back to this one in a bit. Add a few adjustments to the shape of the pumpkin here. Moving to the top pumpkin, we'll do a much different mouth on this one. Using the guidelines, draw a small half circle on the far side of the face guides. On the other side, draw a much bigger half circle, connecting it with a smaller one. Notice how they merge at that center guideline. Draw a small circle for an eye, and a larger one for the other eye. I'm going to adjust the side of this pumpkin a bit here. Now we'll add some pumpkin lines. More so at the top and bottom of the pumpkin shape, not so much in the middle. Do the same kind of pumpkin lines for the middle pumpkin. Notice how I keep adjusting the shape of these pumpkins as I go, trying to get things just right. Some pumpkin lines on the bottom one. Then we can add some more detail at the bottom of the pumpkin and some more ground details. Back to the top pumpkin, we'll add a stem to this guy. Start with this little squiggle off the edge of the pumpkin, and like a broken stick, hook it back towards the pumpkin. Notice it's a little lumpy where the stem lines come away from the pumpkin, like tree roots. So we'll add a few more details to those tree roots. A little oval at the end of the stem gives it a cut look, and we can add some cut lines into these eyes. We'll add some additional cut lines to the eyes of the middle pumpkin. I'll also reinforce the rest of the eyes a bit here. And finally, we get to this mouth. I'm going to do a zigzag line for the top part. The slower you do this, the better these triangle shapes you'll get out of the zigzag line. Now 
For the bottom line, carefully follow that top line. You don't have to make yours as close as mine are though. A quick nose on this one with the inner little cut line. I'm just going to reinforce a few lines here in the bottom pumpkin. Put some more creepy detail to the eyes as I darken them. I'll also darken the mouth lines, just following the lines we want to keep. This is where an eraser would come in handy. Darken the bottom teeth. And the nose. Add the cut lines to these eyes. Use the same pattern for the teeth that you used for the eyes. You don't have to make these thick if you didn't leave enough room. Putting the cut lines on only one side help make it look more 3D. Moving back to the tombstones, let's darken the outer line on this one, adding some little chips and nicks on this line. With a little extra for the center line. Next, we'll add some lines for cracks. Let these go wherever, even all the way across. A couple of extra lines here and there, add a lot of depth. And let's add a bit of detail to our original ground line, creating a little bit of a background here. Then add some cracks and detail to the other gravestone. Darken the lines and add some nicks. Add more ground detail if you want. I did. Then add some cracks to this tombstone. From here, we'll darken and thicken the outer lines of the pumpkins, including where they overlay each other. We'll darken and reinforce a few lines here and there, along with more ground lines. A quick reinforcement of the outer lines of the tombstones. We'll darken and reinforce a few lines here and there. We'll make a small adjustment here to this rough circle for the moon. The ring of scribble lines will actually smooth it out a bit, allowing our brain to accept the shape easier. And a bit more ground detail. I'm all about the ground plane in this one. Actually, I realized I should add another layer of background. Notice how this new ground line makes that top line look a little bit further away. Now we're gonna shade these pumpkins. Be very careful with this stage. Notice how I work lightly and we'll build it up in layers to get the effect and not ruin our drawing. I'm going to shade just the sides of the pumpkin that face away from the moon. This will make the eyes glow a bit once we're done. Just some basic hatching to get a light shading pass with this pen. We'll do the same with the middle pumpkin taking care to avoid the openings and the bottom pumpkin. and the ground shadow. And the face of each tombstone that faces away from the moon, shade that in. Remember to keep this first pass of shading kind of light though. An extra thick line on this side of the pumpkins adds to that shadowing effect. And like that shadow on the ground, each of these pumpkins will cast a shadow on the one under it. Have the shadow be darkest at the crook, just in that little space where the two pumpkins meet. Also, use the shading to show more of the shape of the pumpkin here, with that lumpy kind of uh, pattern. 
Notice how dark I make these deeper shadows. And we're going to build this shading up with layers. More layers. More layers. more layers more layers more ground shade the ground we'll move along to the underside of the top pumpkin building up that shadow and adding more layers to the middle pumpkin shade 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 more shade add some shade here a bit darker at the top here you can see how we're getting the effect to come together now more shade Shade. Shade the ground. Shade the stem. Just a bit of fine tuning here and there. And we'll add some cross hatching to the tombstones, just in a few areas to build up a little bit more of a worn down kind of texture. Shade the ground. And now at long last, we'll start detailing this moon. I'm gonna add a slight shadow off the side with the pumpkins. That tells me the light that shines on the moon from the sun is coming from the top left. I need to know that light direction to draw the craters. Draw these C-shapes with the open side facing away from the light. Draw a bunch of these C-shapes in any size and let them overlap, but keep them all pointed in the same direction. Once I have enough C's drawn in, I'm going to thicken the apex of the curve on each one just a bit. Again, all pointed in the same direction. I like to add this big impact at the bottom right of the moon. Just do this with some radiating lines from one of the craters you drew. Don't overdo this, I only like to add this one. Shade in some of the craters, focusing on the dark edges of the C shape. Don't shade past the middle point though. There are some darker portions in the moon surface that are actually cooled lava pools. Just add a bit of shading to mark these out. I'm going to reinforce the hat shading for the shadow on the moon. And add a layer of hat shading to the moon overall. A bit more darkening and reinforcing of lines here and there. And we'll add this bit of shading to the background edge, since we're not coloring in the sky itself. This is just some rough cross hatching following the line. This is just some rough cross hatching following the line. And a bit more off the second ground line we had added. And more shading for the ground. That's how we draw ground. And that's how we draw ground. I mean, a stack of pumpkins in a graveyard, right? Uh, there is definitely a lot going on with this one. And I'm so grateful that you watched to the end. Honestly, this one could use some color, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get to that. Thanks for watching. Check out the links for socials, art books, and other merch. Give us a like and a subscribe, and I'm sure I'll catch you later.